John chapter 10 verse 25 to 31 John chapter 10 verse 25 to verse 31 I'm gonna read it from my Bible Jesus replied okay are you there John chapter 10 verse 25 onwards Jesus replied I have already told you and you don't believe me the proof is the work I do in my father's name but you don't believe me because you are not my sheep my sheep listen to my voice I know them and they follow me I give them eternal life and they will never perish no one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else no one can snatch them from the father's hand the father and I are one verse 31 once again the people picked up stones to kill him father we pray that you would come and pour out your presence on the scriptures that that we would be that it would come alive to us that we would be able to hear what's on your heart that we would be able to hear what you want to tell us this morning God what you want us to learn this morning Lord I am as much as a student as anybody else in this places speak to me I pray we give you the praise in Jesus name everybody said amen now can I give you the context for this particular scripture? Jesus starts John chapter 10 with saying that uh, I am the good shepherd. Do you know that verse? I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He goes on to say that, you know, I am the door for the sheep. He who enters through me finds eternal life you know and and he is talking in all this parable and and difficult language that that finally the the leaders the elders in, in that place they got upset they were like man i we we have no idea what you're talking about one day you're saying that you're the bread of life another day you're saying that you are the resurrection the other day you're saying that you are the door what do you mean where are you taking us please tell us plainly you know tell us plainly what exactly who exactly are you you know verse uh, 34 24 it says the people surrounded him and asked how long are you gonna keep us in suspense if you are the Messiah tell us plainly tell us just 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 get it out of your system just tell us don't don't play around with words just tell us that you are the Messiah and and the response that Jesus gives is so um, so powerful and this is what Jesus said Jesus says verse 25 Jesus replied I have already told you but you would not believe me but you would not receive what I have given you you would not believe what I have already told you in other words what Jesus was saying is hey you know what from the time that I, I can I have been speaking I have been telling you that I am the Messiah I have been revealing myself over and over again in these last few years that I have been with you but you would not see you would not receive you would not understand you would just keep your mind closed you would just not see the fact that you know uh, that, that I have been revealing myself to you in other words what Jesus is saying is hey you keep coming to me and saying that you need this from me you need um, you know that from me you need uh, you know if, if, if you would do if uh, you know like what these guys were saying is you tell us that you are the Messiah and we will worship you you tell us that you are the Messiah and we will believe in you you know you tell us that you prove it and we will accept you you we will declare you as the Messiah of Israel but but what Jesus was saying is hey guys look at the proof that I have already given you look into your past look into all the things that I have been doing till now look into every word that I have been speaking till now look into every places that I have visited till now and you will find proof for the fact that I am the Messiah in other words what Jesus is saying is this when we go to God with conditions and and 
and, and, and things that we expect him to do so that we can worship him, so that we can give our lives to him. What Jesus says is, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before I do this for you, for your, for your future, look into your past. Look at into your past and, and find the fact that I have been so, so faithful to you in your past. You know, many a times we, we expect God to do you know great things for us in the future but we are never thankful to God for what he has already done for us in the past we are not always thankful or we we don't always respond uh, with a positive heart for what God has already done in other words from the time that you were conceived in your mother's womb do you know how difficult it is for a baby to make it through those nine months and if it is not for the hand of God the Bible says you have cons you knew me before I was conceived in my mother's womb in, in other words even before your parents decided to have a baby God had already known your personality God has knows your hairstyle does that freak you out God knows everything about you God knows what your career is gonna be God knows you know, uh, what car you're gonna drive God knew you God knows you completely and the Bible says he formed me very delicately delicately he formed me in my mother's womb you know because we've been pregnant in the last uh, seven eight months what we've been doing constantly is we keep going to YouTube and and check out videos of how the the baby is is formed you know how the developments and it's so so beautiful trust me if there is anything that is that is the most miraculous thing uh, physical thing that I can mention it's the it's the formation of a baby in the mother's womb and and the development it's so so beautiful and and the experiences that we've had and and i i i i'm hundred percent sure that if it was not for god's hand on the on that baby in the tummy you know inside the mother's womb you know that baby cannot survive there that baby cannot survive and and from those days you know and uh, not just I'm not talking about what happened the last week but I'm talking about back then you know those days those uh, memories you don't even have them in your family album do you do you have pictures in your family album from uh, how you looked in your mother's womb no but but God knew you God God's hand was upon you since then and God says hey guess what before you keep pestering me for miracles before you keep pestering me with conditions go back and check what I did for you in your past from the time that you were conceived in your mother's womb right until today count your blessings and thank the Lord count your blessings and give him praise count your blessings and say God I I, I know that I am I am I am in this place where I need a blessing from you but before I ask you for more I'm gonna look back at all the things that you have already given me all the things that you have already told me all the places that you have already taken me through all the difficult times that you have already helped me conquer I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna thank you one of the things that I regularly do is I, I maintain a diary you know where uh, you know on a regular on a daily basis I just um, add whatever happened on the day on that day whatever God is speaking to me how God is leading me on that day and I have found this f so beautiful you know somebody else suggested this to me and and I and I started doing it that when I was you know feeling alone when I'd be feeling uh, that God is not speaking to me when I'm when I feel that uh, you know I I don't have any motivation what I do is I I go back and I start reading them one by one and I see how God would walk me through all the difficult times and and when I see that man I trust me at that point God doesn't have to speak anything else to me but the very fact that God was with me in those days the very knowledge of that fact and courageous and motivates and 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 gives me greater enthusiasm to to live my today and and that's one thing that Christians often tend to forget that 
uh, that is to go back and check at what God did. If you read the book of Psalms, you would always see this, that the, the psalmist, it could be David, Moses, anybody who is writing the psalm, they would, they would go back and they would say, you know, you are the one who brought us out of Egypt. You are the one who gave us victory against the kings of this land. You are the one who, who delivered me from my enemies. They would keep looking back to the past and they would thank God and they would say, God, hence we desire for a miracle right now. Hence, we did. You, 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 if you could do that in the past, you can do it again today. So, can I, can I request you church, point number one, remember to go back to your past and give God the glory. Remember to go back to your past and, and run over the lessons that you have learned from the past. You know, don't ignore them. Learn your lessons. And when we worship God for His hand over our life in the past, we will be able to see his clear directions and that that is the point when we will be able to see his ways for us in the days to come that is the point when uh, the doors ahead of us will begin to open up when we begin to thank god for what he has already revealed and done for us in the past amen i have already told you i have already revealed myself to you but you will not accept it jesus says and, and then Jesus goes on to say that, hey, you know what? One of the reasons that you don't accept it is because you're not my sheep. You know, my sheep has a, has a particular identity. You know, not everybody is part of Jesus' sheep. You know, you know how, when will we know that, you know, I cannot stand here and say because you've been a member of Bangalore Revival Center that you're part of, you know, Jesus' sheep. No, no, no. One day we will get to know, you know when is that day? When Jesus comes and takes us to heaven and there are three things that, that will surprise us that many of the people that we expected to find there, they won't be there. Many of those who we didn't expect to find there, they were there and you would also be surprised that wow, I made it here, you know. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, not, not all are part of God's sheep or not all are part of this of this sheepfold of Jesus Jesus over here gives four things how you can identify that you are part of the sheepfold of God I cannot do that you have to check your own heart and and check do I belong to this category do I belong to Jesus's sheep the first thing is this they believe instead of doubting and questioning they believe Verse 25, it says, you don't believe me. Be, uh, verse 26, in, in fact, it says, you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep, they believe in me. They, they trust me 100 percent. They have faith in what I say. They, they believe when I say that I'm going to see them through this. They believe in me. They have 100 percent trust in my word. You know, that is how... I, I would distinguish between a, you know, a, a person. It's not wrong to question. Trust me. It's not wrong to question. You would see the disciples, the 12 disciples who were walking with Jesus for three and a half years. Who've seen a side of Jesus that no one else on this planet before or after has seen. They've seen a side of God that nobody else has seen before or after and they would question from time to time and 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 when they would be in in situations like this they would say god we don't have enough faith to believe this but but give us more faith teach us how to pray teach us how to believe teach us how to put our trust in you but they would they wouldn't disbelieve or they wouldn't keep challenging jesus from time to time saying if you are god do this if you are Jesus do this you know that's that's what the the that's what Herod did that's what the Pharisees the Herod did said hey if you're really the son of God show us a sign make a you know do a miracle over here and and I'll believe in you the 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 religious leaders they went to Jesus and said hey you you want you want us to believe yes we will believe but you know give us a sign you know prove prove it you know do something spectacular write it down on the in the clouds that you are the messiah and we will believe in you and and that's exactly what as christians and many a times we 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 tend to do that don't we do that at times when we say 
God, if you really love me, you have to do this for me. If you're really God, if you really care about me, you don't believe that God's word says that he loves you. You don't believe that God's word says that he cares for you. You don't believe that God's word says that he's, he's the Lord over your circumstances. You don't believe that God's word, uh, you know, you don't believe what is written in God's word. And when we do that, we are in the same danger as these Pharisees. Though they were questioning the divinity of Jesus, but, but what we, we are questioning, when we question God's word, what we are also questioning is, hey, because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. This word of God that we read, it is his personality, it is, it is Jesus himself. And when we disbelieve the word, what we are not believing is Jesus himself. What we are losing faith in is, is Jesus. And that is the first thing how you identify a, a, a person who belongs to the sheep fold of Jesus. There are many who are Christians, you know. If you come to church regularly, I will give you a church membership. You can be called a Christian, but you cannot be part of Jesus' sheep till you begin believing, till you begin trusting, till you begin going to his word and say, God, this is what it says. I'm just going to believe this. I'm just going to trust you 100%. If, if the Bible says I can walk on water, I can walk on water. If the Bible says that I will heal the sick, I will heal the sick. If the Bible says that there is nothing impossible for me, there is nothing impossible. If the Bible says that I am more than a conqueror, even when I have failed in this exam for 35 times, I will still believe the Bible instead of believing my circumstances because, because God's word is eternal. God's word is infallible. God's word, God's promises, they never, never change. Amen? The first way to identify the sheep of Jesus is that they have, they have faith that they believe instead of doubting and questioning. Point number two, this is, they listen to his voice. Jesus said, my sheep, they listen to my voice. They listen to my voice. That is the, that is the second way. Now, you know, most of you listen to the voice of your pastor. But if you listen to the voice of your pastor, you might get membership in a church. Not, not membership in Jesus' fold. To be in Jesus' sheep fold, you would have to listen to His voice. You would have to be attentive to His sayings. And the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, that still comes, it still comes. Even on December 1st morning, you know, the word of God keeps coming. It keeps coming to every person who is ready to listen to his voice. You no, know, for example, you know, I, I, I believe you would know this example, but I'd still say this, you know, that right here, right now, there are like hundreds and thousands of, of frequencies and you know sound waves and and you know uh, in and uh, light electromagnetic waves that are present in this place but it takes uh, a phone like this to be able to tune in to one of those waves one of those frequencies so that i can call and talk to somebody on the other end of the world right does it make sense to you like without this phone without me turning the phone on without me dialing his number doesn't matter how much of magnetic field electromagnet whatever it works on it's it's around over here i cannot i cannot uh, access the person on the other side it's only when i turn it on and i and i make an effort to dial is when we reach out and the bible says jeremiah 33 verse 3 call out to me in your day of trouble and i will hear you and i will listen to you and i will answer you i will i will be there to, i will be attentive and i will speak to you when we when we go to him and we start speaking to 
he starts speaking back he is not a dumb god he is a god who who speaks he is a god who loves to share his heart and the second thing about the sheep of jesus is that they listen to his voice they listen to his voice very intently they are they are very keen to hear what jesus is speaking they are very keen to hear what jesus is saying and that is and that is one of those things that we shouldn't miss it's not so so in other words it's not enough that we believe it's not enough that we have 100% faith in god it is essential that we also listen continually that our ears will be continually listening to the voice of our shepherd because jesus said my sheep they will listen to my voice not everybody but my sheep they will listen to my voice the point number 3 is is this uh, you know i'm i'm preaching from matthew sorry john chapter 10 and verse 27 jesus says my sheep listen to my voice i know them and and they follow me you know the, th- the third thing is that there is a, a you know in response to this faith and in response to this continuous listening to his voice there is a knowing that happens between the sheep and the shepherd or in in other words the the sheep they they know what the master is about to do you know even before the master says it out they they know his heart you know that uh, when you when you begin to uh, know a friend of yours for a long time when you continually listen to the person's voice for a long time the moment you receive that person's call you know that the person is sad or you know that the person is angry or you know that this person is you know happy or you know you you, you just know because even before the person starts sharing his heart and and that is the third place that that uh, the the sheep and this this a uh, shepherd relationship takes us to you know that is the third way to identify the sheep of Jesus that they they know him they know his heart they know even before even before he you know they don't have to wait for god to send an angel and tell them go and preach the gospel they know that hey that is that is my that is my responsibility you know they they know that they are supposed to do this they don't wait to come to church for the for the you know worship leader to come and say hey let's everybody let us jump they they begin to jump you know they because they know their master they the moment their master shows up they begin to jump the minute their master shows up they begin to clap the minute their master shows up they begin to shout the minute their master shows up they begin to lay down their heart in the presence of their master and that is the one thing that is the third thing sorry you know that 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 identifies the sheep of jesus that they that they know their master number 1 they believe in him number 2 they listen to his voice number 3 they know him and number 4 last but not the least least they follow him they they go after him you know it, there is a lot of people who listen to his voice there is even few who know him but only few who obey him who who live in response to his voice who live in response to uh, that revelation that they 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 have received from god and i pray that as a church we will be the category that 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 has all the four that we believe in him that we listen to him that we know him and that we follow him and if we follow him man there are days when we will we will find it difficult because jesus said my way is not easy narrow is the way that leads to life and broad is the way that leads to destruction 
If you're going to follow me, there are going to be trials, tribulations. There are going to be crosses that you would have to carry. There, there are going to be uh, times of persecution that, that, that people will put you through. Your family will put you through. Your, you know, even your enemies will put you through. But even in all those times, I will be with you. That is the promise. And, and, and that is the thing, you know, we, we all love to hear his voice we all love to know him but when it comes to difficult times you know some will be like uh, no I don't I don't think it's it's worth it the others will be like you know there was this one person who followed Jesus all the way to the cross he had thousands of disciples he fed 7,000 people at one go one time 7,000 people you know out of which there were about you know I think about 500 people who are witnesses to the ascension of Jesus you know you can see the difference right the at one day he, he had a church of 7,000 people the other day you know he just have 500 people in the church and only 120 of them actually stayed back to receive the Holy Spirit on the on the day of the you know out of that 120 only 70 of them did Jesus trust with ministry 70 of them Jesus sent them out in pairs you remember the book of Luke when we studied we uh, studied that Jesus sent out 70 people to 35 cities two by two in pairs of two and out of the 70 only 12 did he really really walk with all the time he would uh, he would you know eat with them travel with them everything they were a huge team you know together they would go into cities together they would go to pray together they would do, go to do all these cool miracles and out of this 12 only three of them had access to a much more personal place of Jesus they saw Jesus raise the the dead person they saw Jesus uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration they saw Jesus in the in the Garden of Gethsemane so close those those three people James Peter James and but only one person was there at the foot of the cross and that was John there's only one person whom who made it till the end there are many who follow Jesus there are many who uh, you know uh, believe in Jesus there are many who celebrate Jesus but only few who follows him all the way till the end and I pray that every single person in this place if you are a sheep who believe who belongs to Jesus that you would you would not only believe in him that you would not only listen to his voice that you would not only know his heart but that you would follow him till the end till the last minute there's one person who was following Jesus from a distance and that was Peter and he followed Jesus till the time that somebody asked hey aren't you one of them aren't you also one of those guys and Peter says no 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 no, no. I'm sorry don't persecute me you can, you can I'm not one of them and, and Peter withdraws but but John he stays back till the end and you know he he was there to experience to share to be to be a comfort to Jesus when he was being crucified on the cross and 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 that is all that Jesus asks that you follow me till the end till the last moment that you run after me amen, amen. the first thing was that we should go back into our past and we should worship God for what he has already done point number two was that we should know our identity as the sheep of Jesus there are four things that uh, categorizes uh, you know uh, and and we know that we are that, that how we can identify ourselves as the sheep of Jesus the point number three is that Jesus sheep they don't just have an identity they have a security this is this is something that excites me you know Jesus says in verse 28 I give them eternal life and they will never perish isn't that cool isn't isn't it cool that that we have eternal life isn't it cool that that after your life on the earth you still have a life that after you know many people you know what is their lives today 
you know that that small dash in, in on their grave tomb which says 1958 to 2013 that that small dash there will be a small dash between those two uh, dates and that small dash is their life that's it and gone forever but we that death is not the ending we have an eternal security you know we have a heaven to look forward to Jesus sheep they don't just have an identity uh, they have a security they have a eternal security in heaven not just in heaven but here on the earth they have a security and this is what Jesus says no one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else no one can snatch them out of my father's hand can you can you visualize this uh, okay I will help you visualize this okay is there anybody in this house who is strong enough to come and take my iPhone out of my hand <laughs> I'm sure Elena cannot Elena will not <laughs> Uh, he can do that in a minute. Uh, oh, my wife says she can do it too. Uh, I'm sorry. It looks like most of you are stronger than your pastor. I, I should have used John for this example. But, but no. Uh, suppose, okay. Suppose by some means I'm the strongest person in this place. Okay. Okay. Imagine that you are less stronger than I am. That I have been working out 20 uh, sorry all 30 days in a month and for all 12 months in a year and next year this time I am like John okay and and all of you put together you know cannot snatch this iPhone because this iPhone is so dear to me I will not let anybody else take this out of my hand and 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 that's what Jesus is saying Jesus is saying hey because you are my sheep you're so precious to me that the Father has given you to me. Nobody can snatch you out of my hands. Not just that you are in my hands, but you are in, in the Father's hands. And, and Jesus mentions that. He says, there is nobody more powerful than the Father. There is, he is more powerful than anyone else. At, when he opened his mouth, at, out of his breath, was created the stars of the sky Amen. he is the he is the one who who holds you in his hands and he he uh, you know it is I think Zechariah 2 verse 8 if I'm not wrong yeah Zechariah 2 verse 8 God says if you touch my people you are touching the apple of my eye in other words we are not just in his hands we are behind his eyelids how how crazy would that be that if, if somebody would have to touch God <laughs> if somebody would have to touch me he would have to touch God yesterday we were just uh, you know settling the accounts from a previous house where we were staying and that guy cheated us and you know charged something extra that he had said he would not and, and but we just came back happy and we just said hey big deal our money is God's money so if he he loots us he's he's taking panga with God you know it's it's not easy to to you know rob God and get away with it you can rob me and get away with it you can touch me and get away with it you can all be strong enough to beat me down but you cannot beat God down if you touch me you touch the apple of God's eye does that make you feel proud does that make you feel secure does that make you feel uh, you know so so sure that no harm will come against your life without your father's knowledge that he who touches you go and memorize this verse Zechariah 2 verse 8 God says if you touch my people you touch the apple of my eye and, and that is the promise that God has given you know I, I love to call this the God sandwich you know John 14 verse 20 I have preached the same thing over here a lot of times but for the sake of uh, uh, this point can I share this again John 14 verse 20 Jesus says when I am raised to life 
you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. In other words, uh, okay, imagine this, okay? Imagine a huge circle that is the Father and inside the Father is Jesus. Jesus says, I am in my Father. So in other words, Jesus is in the Father. Okay? Now, and Jesus says, and you are in me. In other words, we are inside Jesus and Jesus is inside the Father. And Jesus does not stop with that. Jesus says, and I am inside you. In other words, I am sending the Holy Spirit who will come and, and take his place inside you. So, so inside of you, who is it? God. Who is around you? God. Who is around that? God. And I, I, I love to call it the God sandwich. How God has sandwiched our lives. You know, our, that there is nothing that can touch us without the hand of God being upon us without the grace of God helping us through it there is nothing 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 you know if there is any sheep of Jesus in this place who is who is struggling to find their uh, find their security I want to tell you you have a security and that security is eternal and that security you will find in Jesus amen okay let me quickly finish uh, first what was the first point I have already told you okay so I have already revealed it to you so go back to your past check it out and come back point number two Jesus sheep has an identity point number three Jesus sheep has a security point number four this is what Jesus does Jesus says Jesus does not shop, stop with saying that Jesus says hey guess what I and the father we are one and the Jews couldn't understand it the Jews couldn't take it because they have heard this scripture that says behold the Lord your God he is one you will not have any other gods beside me and somebody has the daring to say that I and the father we are one and 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 if you would if you would study the scriptures carefully right now with the reference of the New Testament you will find so many places in the Old Testament where God talks about the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit being one but but those guys they didn't have the revelation they didn't know about the Holy Spirit they didn't know about Jesus they knew about a Messiah who would come they knew about a Savior he it could be anybody like King David because he is the son of David they didn't know that he would come up and say that I and my father we are one they were so blown away when they said when they heard this and 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 the Bible says they when they heard this they picked up stones to to throw at Jesus in other words Jesus gave them a revelation which was so untraditional which is so unconventional which was so not what they have heard and learned and taught all the days and and they they were not ready to accept it they were like but but for your kind information these guys were waiting for four thousand years for the unfolding of to for to hear jesus say this from the garden of eden we've been waiting for the 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 person who would come and who would reveal himself to us and and he finally reveals himself and when he does they they just couldn't take it they just said no 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 this this cannot be it this cannot be it. this is not how God works this is not how God does things and 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 that is the danger that we also at times run into when when we say when God says this is how your life is gonna be and and you say no 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 I I tell God how it should be you know out of my out according to my calculations this is how it should run according to my things this is how it should happen no 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 not not your ways God my way this is this is better than what and and, and they they found it really difficult to accept it now my question for the fourth point to you guys is this what is that one revelation of God that 
that, that God has been repeatedly bringing to you. You know, every one of us, as we follow Him, God would reveal a side of His that we have not experienced ever before. And, and, and when we do that, if we yield, if we surrender, you know, there were two re responses here. If you would say, that's, that's my point number five. There's two responses. One, one group, they, they picked up stones to kill. Another person, you would read it in, in John 9, verse 20s or 30s, where the blind man, Jesus says the same thing to the blind man who was healed. And the Bible says he fell down and he worshipped Jesus. Two responses to a revelation of God. One group, they stone, they try to stone him. Another group, they worship God. They say, God, if that is it, I will accept it. If that's what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. If that is what you want from us as a church, we would do that. You know, so let us be a church who would be completely surrendered to God's, to the Lordship of Jesus. What he was basically saying over here is, hey, you know the Father, right? You know that He is God. I am Him. I and my Father, we are one. I am God. I have the same place in the Trinity as the Father has. I am as powerful as the Father is. I, I can do all things. And when, when He said that, one group, they were like, wow. And they worshipped Him. The other group, no, we, we won't believe you. We won't accept this. And they, can we, as a church, bow down to the Lordship of Jesus? Can we believe? Can we say, God, if you, if you would reveal a side of yours to this church that we've not experienced or learned or understood before, we will gladly accept it. Amen. That we will gladly take it up. That we would gladly say yes Lord to it we would gladly say Lord come and have your way and and we would worship you for it I'm sure in the days to come God you know you know there are different names of God how many of you did read uh, my wife's blog uh, she she just wrote a blog last week that says what's in a name and she talks about the way at the end the various names of God and, and what those names mean to us. And every name of God has a specific, in detailed revelation for our lives. And, and, and if we surrender as a church, God is going to reveal, God is going to open up every aspect of His personality. In other words, you know, God, the Bible says, Jehovah Rapha or Jehovah Healer. He's, he's the God who heals our disease. If if we would believe it, God would, God would reveal Himself as a healer in our church. And in the days to come, we would see thousands upon thousands of people healed inside this hall. If you would believe it. If, if we would surrender to every revelation. Like that, there are so many other revelations about God, about the person of God. And if we surrender to them we will see a side of God that we have never seen before. We will see the, the, the personality, we will experience the personality of God that we have never ever experienced before. Can we all close our eyes in God's presence? Can we all ask God, God, speak to me this morning. What is that one thing that I have not accepted till now? What is that one area in my life that I have not accepted your lordship over what is it one thing God that I, that I need to bow down where I need to bow down is it in my obedience to your word is it in my obedience to your voice is it in my decision to follow you all the way through is it in my decision to leave certain things that you have been telling me to do what is it what is it God that you expect from me Lord, many a times I come to you with expectations of what I want you to do for me. But this morning I'm coming to you with expecting you to show me what you want me to do. Expecting you to show me what is wrong in my life. What, what needs to be fixed in my life. What needs to be changed in my life.
for somebody God says I, I am your provider you've been struggling to raise money for this one particular project that the, the, the Lord says I am your provider don't go to people for help come to me look to me and and see how I turn heavens and I will provide for your needs I will open up heavens to meet your needs says the Lord don't go to people says the Lord don't go to people people some trust in chariots some trust in princes but they will all be disappointed but they who trust in Jesus they who trust in the Lord they will not be disappointed they will not be put to shame I am your provider says the Lord I am your provider yield yourself to me yield yourself to me father we pray uh, that you would blow over your children this morning God that you would blow over your children Holy Spirit we pray that every verse from John chapter 10 verse 25 to 31 will be etched into our hearts God that we would always go back and thank you for your hand upon our past that we would always know our identity in you what we do because we are your sheep that we would always be aware of our security in you God that we would always be open to new revelations of who you are that we would always bow down our knees to your revelation God use us speak to us this week we pray in Jesus mighty name and everybody said an amen